is led by uh, Christian Perrier. You may know him as Bouboul. Uh, and it's about the translation workflow uh, within the Debian project. Um, so uh, Christian has done lots and lots of work within Debian translation. He's someone who you'd be working with if you're helping out on translation stuff. So Christian, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Do you hear me? Donc, euh, je vais faire cette présentation en français, après une présentation en espagnol, et avant une présentation par Stefano Zacchiroli en italiano. You have 10 seconds to run out of this room. Of course, I do this presentation in English. I can't do it in Spanish. So I do it in broken English, much more easier to understand, I guess. So as Daniel said, I'm involved in uh, localization and translation and all that kind of stuff in Debian for about 10 years. It's 11 years since I'm a Debian developer. I do not only do that in Debian, I also maintain packages, so even if you are labeled as a translator, you can still maintain packages. I used to define myself as a non-technical Debian developer, which means if you are a non-technical guy or lady, you can still maintain packages. So this will be about a kind of tutorial. Doing a tutorial in four to five minutes is really difficult, so I go into a few points just to give you an idea and a picture. Uh, some parts of this tutorial, funnily, are about the same than those uh, Fernando Estrada gave yesterday during the Debian Day. So it's interesting to see that both different views will show you about the same things. So I'll talk first to talk uh, about some, OK. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so I move too much. I talk too much. I move too much. Uh, sometimes I drink too much, too. Whatever. I talk about some general stuff about localization, internationalization. Then I will give you an example of how to translate some DevConf templates very quickly, of course. I'll give you an example of how we, what is the process to translate some web pages and then a final summary about all the ideas we saw during this talk. So about general stuff. What I need to address in this tutorial are the questions people might have when they want to get involved in Debian and want to contribute to localization or internationalization. What things do we translate in Debian? What kind of workflow are we using in this work? And how can I or can you be involved in that process? What I will not address in this talk is how the software or the web or the wiki or whatever it is is internationalized, is made translatable. I will not address the question about why is the information so jerky and you will see that. And I will not answer what is your favorite color, because the answer, of course, is red. Oh, no, blue. blue. So let's, a few reminders. Funnily, uh, Fernando did exactly the same yesterday. So what we call internationalization. Now, after 10 years, I can say it without problems. Internationalization is the action to make software or something else usable and ready to work in different languages in different countries. And what we call localization, which we shorten at L10N, because there are 10 letters between the L and the N, it's the action of translating software or something else and documentation to different languages. So you will see very often I18N, L10N everywhere. What do we translate in Debian? Many things. 
Here again, Fernando yesterday made exactly the same slides. They are about the same things. The most the important things we translate are Debian native software, such as dpackage, apt, aptitude, many others, all those software we only have in Debian. The packages interaction with users, such as debconf templates, the question that are asked when you install a package, what is the root password, uh, what is uh, the directory you want to work on, etc., etc. The installer also is package interaction with user. It asks questions. You need to read them in your language. The website is, of course, one very important item uh, for translators. Many things like Debian news, press releases, announcements, security announcements, and things like that. Package descriptions, a very important item. All packages have description, like to one, two, three paragraph for each packages. package. I don't know how many packages we have. I lost the count, but imagine, like 30,000 packages and many, many words. It's a giant work. All Debian-specific documentation, such as developer documentation, or administration documentation and things like that. And one of some important things that appeared recently, books, uh, many probably know about the Debian Administration Handbook written by Raphael Herzog and Roland Maas. Funnily, the French translator, at this moment, we don't work on it because it was published initially in French. But some teams, like the Spanish team, are working to translate it also and probably many other items I forget. What we do not translate is upstream software. Upstream software is software we're using in our desktops, like LibreOffice or GNOME or whatever. No translator in Debian works on that. This is done in their respective upstream. We do not translate wiki pages. It may surprise some of you because you have seen translated wiki pages, but my, and this is an opinion of mine, currently this is not reliable enough on wiki.debian.org because you have no way to know if a translation is up to date with respect to its original. So in my opinion, at this moment, we have hard times translating the wiki. And we do not translate derivative distributions. This is also a stance of mine. I'm always I'm often contacted by users of some derivative distribution, you know what I mean, who want to translate it to their language. I'm fine with that. If these people, on the other hand, come at me just because they want the other distribution to be translated and are not interested in Debian itself, I usually noticed that they vanished after a few months. <laughs> so, which is why I say we do not directly translate derivative distribution. Indeed, we do. The installer of Debian is used, for instance, in part of Ubuntu. Let's have an overview about the translation workflow now. I do step by step. Well, first, someone wanting to translate something in Debian has to find what to translate. This is the translator work. So we'll see in the next slides how to find what to work on. The translator also needs to find who to work with. You'll see that translation is not a work you are doing alone. So this is a translator and team work. Of course, you have to translate. That's the job of the translator. It's usually one person doing that. Very important, a translation has to be reviewed. Even if you're the best translator ever, you're always doing mistakes, error, grammar, errors, whatever. It has to be reviewed. This is teamwork. Teamwork is very important. A translation has to be applied either applied by a maintainer in a package or by a translator in a VCS for the website or whatever it is. 
sometimes it happens that it's not applied and then some IATN exterminators come and call for what we call enemy use. I think I'm known for doing that because we want our work to be used. Sometimes it's not used or not used fast enough. This is about the big picture and it works for each kind of translation in Debian. So, well, let's enter the, uh, our quest, our magic quest, which is reaching the famous 100% everything translated. I don't want to see a word of English in this system. <clears throat> so, what, how to find something to translate? This is where the pr presentation becomes tricky because I have to juggle between two things. If we want to translate some programs or DebConf, what we have in Debian are status pages. So I'm supposed to click and then do that, and it's supposed to work, it's working. Here we see the status of templates, DebConf templates, translation in Spanish. This is a very complicated page, very detailed page. I go into some of these details, of course, but this is a starting point for people who want to work on DebConf translation, and we have the same for the programs. If you want to translate the Debian installer, there is a specific status page, which is here. It looks differently. It doesn't have the website look and feel. I'm sorry for that. It's done on another place. And it has the full detail status. It has links to documentation, etc., etc. <clears throat> if you want to translate the website, there is a specific status page for the website. It looks a little bit differently. Again, this is the website status for Spanish. You see how many files are translated, how many not translated, what is outdated, etc. I'll come back on that. If you want to translate the Debian news or some announcements, there is no central site. Announcements and call for translations happen in the general IATN mailing list. For instance, this is a call uh, made by one of the editors of the Debian Project News to translate uh, 2010 slash 12 slash 12 and then people can click and whatever they want to do and get the material to translate. Or the mailing list for your specific language. There are calls in these mailing lists also, for instance, I pointed to a call for translation of the Debian handbook in the Spanish uh, localization mailing list. If you want to translate the package description, there is a nice thing named DDTSS, which means Debian Description Translation System, and I don't know what this final S means. It's a web interface to a thing that's called the DDTP project to translate all descriptions. It's a little bit slower because it runs on a machine lost in Extremadura in Spain, which is quite slow. And there you can work on Spanish translation of package description. I won't show that. This is quite a complicated project. This is on the, all done on a web. And this is the only translation effort that's done on the web in Debian. You see many, many different places, many different starting points. So let's take an example, uh, an example of one of the most um, straightforward process. Uh, translate some DebConf templates for a given package. So let's translate something to Spanish. Spanish is actually not 100% for DebConf templates. This is the team goal. They will reach that goal, I know that. But there are a few bits here and there that still needs to be done. So let's pick to, okay, go to the status page. And here we go. We are to the status page. So this is the same page I, sh I showed. You see many blah, blah, blah. And then packages with PO Debcom support and for which translation is to do. 
Blah, section main. Oh, these Tomoyo tools, not translated. Yeah, I will jump on that. Yeah, Hideki Yamane will be happy because it is his package. And no, I would like to translate this Tomoyo. Don't start now. Don't jump on it because what you need to do is to check if somebody is doing it. So the source for in information for is the Debian Elton and Spanish mailing list we, because I wanted to translate to Spanish and its coordination page. Yes, another status page. Yes, another place to look at. So this kind of things, which is quite well known by people working for a long time in translation work, show you the effort of translation by the Debian, Elton, and Spanish. And basically what I should do is to try to find Tomoyo tools. So let's try to find Tomoyo tools. Tomoyo, Tomoyo, Tomoyo. I said Tomoyo Linux because someone probably made a mistake somewhere. So there's something, and we are in section what it is? ITT, okay, I don't know what it means. It seems that someone named Christian Perrier is working on it, which is strange. There's a link, and this link says, Okay, I intend to translate, but ignore this mail. This is meant for this talk. So apparently there was someone wanting to work on it. I should not start working on it. Of course, I need someone to really do the work because I won't do the work. I repeat, don't start immediately, interact, and use the mailing list. That's really important. So this translation workflow seems complicated. In, indeed, it's really simple. I will maybe have to move across the line. I don't know. It always starts by something we call translation to do, TAF. It's derived from French because many of the processes have been set by the French team. So TAF means traduction à faire, which means translation to do. So someone sends, okay, TAF, Tomoyo tools. Then someone sends an intent to translate. I want to in translate. So it's kind of a reservation of the work. Then the person works on it and at some point has something ready and sends a request for review. And we enter some kind of a loop, review, some reviewers send comments, changes, etc. Another reviewer, etc. And at some point, the original translator thinks, okay, that seems to be ready. I send the last change for comments mail, still to the mailing list. And once done, after some time, I send a bug report. This is a debconf template for a package, so translation should be sent as a bug report. And then, at some point, the maintainer uploads the package, fixes the bug, and the, the translation is done. And if there are changes, we go back to starting point, and we go again and again and again. It seems complicated. Actually, it's used by about 10 different uh, teams, including those teams that are only one single person or one or two single person, because it helps tracking the work. So let's really start. Now we are doing I said, ITT, yes, I will translate Tomoyo. So I send my ITT mail. So let's go. I send my mail. I done. No other Spanish translator will work on that. And I need to get the translation material, of course. So I'm back to the status pages where I was. Oh, I tried to go there. OK. I click here. I get a list. OK. So I have to know this is here that I have to click, because if I click there, that won't work. I go to the BTS. If I click there, I have something completely useless. And this is what I need. I get a file. I save the file. 
somewhere in my TMP uh, directory and then okay I go to TMP is that big enough it's that visible enough okay I unzip because the file was zipped and we have a bug on the current server, so actually the files are zipped twice. Just to be sure, they are very, very, very compressed. Now that's a bug. And I unzip again. I rename this file as es.po because I work for Spanish translation. So stop, let's review. I get the PO file. I put in a work directory. I personally use a directory for each package. I unzip, I rename as es.po or sv.po if I'm a Swedish translator or fr.po, whatever. I never use country modificators. No es underscore and e for Nicaragua or whatever. Never. Particularly for DebConf templates. So, I have a PO file. What is a PO file? This is this kind of uh, we'll use in VI. It's okay. It has a header. Some things that say, okay, the last translator is this person, language team that person, blah, 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 and messages to translate. I can do my work in VI. I can type in VI. Okay, I'm a VI wizard. I but I can make mistakes in VI. It's very easy to make mistakes in VI, in Emacs too. Okay, so that will not be my recommendation. I prefer recommending using dedicated tool. There are many. I picked examples, localize, most often used by KDE users. PO Edit is a GTK based uh, PO editor, G translator. I'm not really sure if it's still well maintained. Or the VI PO mode, the one I was using. I recommend to properly configure the tool because it needs some information, and this information is particularly important. Let's see that with localize. For you, especially, I made my KD environment speak in English, so you're happy. So the most important part is to configure it, to configure your name, the email address. Well, the default language is currently American English because KD is currently configured in English. The mailing list of my team and the localized name of the team. These information are very important because these are go to the headers of the PO file. So this is the way someone wanting to warn you that there's an update needed will send mails. So please take care to configure this very carefully. Then what we have in such an editor is pretty obvious. I have the original message at the top, enable Tomoyo Linux in boot time, and here I can type my translation. What's nice with such tools, they have something named translation memory. For instance, I translated uh, something named QSMTPD, which has a similar question. And here I can pick the translation of QSMTPD with control one. And then I see, okay, for tea, like tea, it's in French, of course, I cannot translate to Spanish. I tried, that, that was the first attempt for this talk, but I won't insist. So I just have to do this because translation memory helps me. In depth confidence place, it's very useful because the messages are always more or less the same. And therefore, you have a consistent style in your translation. So this is why I recommend to use such tools and probably less uh, VI or standard editors because of such facilities. You can also inject in such tools some compendia, some already translated sentences. It's also very useful. There are many, many dozens of useful um, tricks. So 
use dedicated tool, please. I recommend that. Discord. Okay. So I won't do the entire process, otherwise Zach will hate me because I will be late. And Daniel is picking his sign, so how? I should hurry. Let's see how the, the entire wor workflow works. I supposedly have somewhere the workflow, yeah. So what happens is someone sends a mail to the mailing list and say, okay, here for postfix, there is something needed. I usually do that for many teams on behalf of maintainers. It can be the maintainer. It's automated because in the PO file, the, the header says language team for this language is that address. So for Spanish, okay, uh, Francisco uh, was the original translator and the Debian Elton and Spanish team is the language team, so they get the mail. Later on, Matthias sends an ITT, okay, he says nothing. ITT. Apparently, it's not needed to say more. Then he works a little bit and uh, sends RFR, request for review. And he says, okay, there was only one string to modify and sends, well, he chose to show the string that was modified which is a choice, and then he attached the entire translation. And then a few other commented. I don't know what they said. Well, apparently use of adverbs or whatever it is. And at some point he sent LCFC, last chains for comments. And you see this loop in the Mary English archive. It works fairly well, and particularly in teams where there are several uh, contributors. So intent, request for review, suggestions, last change for comments, and after enough time, I put quotes because it depends. You just need to feel. It's usually a few days, then the translator sends a bug report. And Matthias here reported a bug against Postfix using the standard Debian report, bug report tools. I want to go into details here again, but report bug or such kind of tools can be used. And then please find attach a Spanish updated. Uh, we have some uh, conventions that these bugs are always severity wish list and they have tags Eltenen and patch, because you send a translation, that's a patch. It's important because it's more visible for maintainers. And after some really completely unknown time, the maintainer updates when he or she feels the need. Sometimes it takes ages. And sometimes someone is bored of waiting and uh, sends a non-maintainer upload, of course, by interacting with the, the, the original maintainer, which will actually happen very soon for Postfix because I'm waiting for a very long time for these updates since April, as you've seen. That was one example. But, uh, okay. Let's take another example, a little bit shorter, because you'll see it's the same process, but different kind of translation. It, let's talk about a web page translation. To be honest, web page translation is not something I do very often, so I learned a little bit beforehand with my friend David, who is sitting around there, and who is the wizard of the French translation of web pages, as well as the wizard of the Debian websites. So this is completely different. The website isn't using PO file, isn't using get text. The website uses WML files, so you have the original English and the translation is the same one but with Spanish or French or whatever words. It has no fancy VCS, 
it will probably the, be the very, very last bit of Debian that uses CVS, and there are very good reasons for that. I've been explained about these reasons, and many, many automated mechanisms are working like that. So it seems a little bit old, old-style tools, but it's working, actually, and working very efficiently. So how it's working? More or less, the website requires to have a kind of coordinator. I use this word with quotes. A coordinator is someone who really works, who monitors things very often, very carefully, on a day-by-day -day basis. There can be more than one coordinator per language team. One doing the website, another survey the PO Dep count for stuff, another the installer, etc. I don't think it's a very good thing to have one that does everything. It's not humanly possible. Actually, this is the way we auto-organize the French team. This coordinator for the website needs to have commit rights. It helps a lot. It's not mandatory, but it helps a lot. And he or she can dispatch or prioritize the work. Of course, there are some pages that are more important to translate than some user pages. I discovered that we have some pages on the website where some users describe how they are using Debian. Some are 10 years old or something, I guess. And there, some of them are translated. So people were translating this. It's fun. This is the same process. TAF, translation to do, uh, ITT, RFR, LCFC. And at the end, of course, there is no bug report. You cannot easily, I, I guess you can, maybe send a bug report against the website, and someone in the web team will commit. But imagine if they have to do this for each translation file and each language. And then sends a dawn message still to the mailing list because this mailing list is processed every day to produce the status pages you have seen. So, let's see the web status pages. I chose, this one I chose the French translations because we worked a little bit with David to prepare this. So we have here a file, uh, Debian Accessibility Index, what? Reload the page. I'm supposed to reload the page because there's some cache effect somewhere. Oh, yes. Thank you. So it seems complicated. Indeed, it's really easy. If you click here, you see the web page. If you click there, you will see the diff between the version that is translated and the new version. This page is outdated. The French version is based on version 1.10, while the current version is 1.11. Even you can stay here. There is some JavaScript. You need JavaScript. Ah, and click. And you see there is one line added. OK, Hossa, that's an easy stuff. I can do it easily. There are no 200,000 lines. So that's an easy work. I can view the file the WML file, or I can, whatever it is, I think I see the CVS log or something. So let's view the file, for instance. OK, this is the file. And the diff, of course, applies to this file. Here, I think I can download this file. So this is the place where I click, and then I get the file to update. I'll save it. Yes, index, OK, yeah. And, but I see this gentleman here said, OK, there is work to do. To do, tough, the same thing. So he probably sent to the ma French mailing list. Let's see. Yeah, TAF, WML. It's very encoded. You, there is a syntax for all this, which says, OK, this is a TAF. This is for WML style files for devel, Debian accessibility, blah, blah, blah. And he says, OK, this is a fake file, but he messed up. This is apparently the second one. Yeah, you made well. 
but that, that works. So as you see, if I'm only reading the mailing list, I say, OK, there's something to do. I go to the web pages, uh, where it is, probably here, yeah. And I can download, which I did, and I can, well, I can use here, I need to use my editor, and then I edit the con file, it's a 1.10. I need to do the needed changes, work with the diff, add what's needed, change what's needed, etc. And then I save and I send and I enter again this loop, RFR, etc. etc. I won't do that because that would be a little bit long, but I guess you see the point. And we enter that loop, and at the end, the coordinator, probably David for the French, uh, the French team, will commit the file. So it was shortened a little bit, but you get the, you get the points. So after reaching that point in my preparation talk, I said, what did I say in this talk? What have these people seen? Let's summarize. We have processes. They work. They are very rock solid. They are work for 10 or 15 years for some of them. The information is very, very disorganized. I can say, oh, how, look, it's fancy. You have only one place you click. No. It's completely disorganized. It works, but disorganized. We don't have any point and click translation system. Some website where you just go and you translate online, and whatever you want to do, you see what I mean. So we have some work in, pro in progress to automate this. Most of this status pages, etc., is based on the work that has been done in 2005, 2006 in Extremadura on a machine that was hosted in Extremadura. We are currently moving this to iatinen.debian.org, an official machine administered by the Debian system administrators, because this infrastructure is very important. This is where you get the package description translation. If it stops working, the, there are no more translation for the packages. So we are currently moving that. I, actually, some places where I clicked I just, so we just switched this week during Deb Camp from one machine to another. We need to centralize this information, this material source, and we need something. The problem is this information is not centralized at all. The DebConf templates, they are in each and every package. Some packages use Git, some use SVN, some don't use any VCS at all. The installer is in Git, but some parts of the installer is, are in SVN. The website is in uh, CVS, etc. You, you see the point. So that's not completely trivial. And we need also to lower the entry barrier. We know what I described is complicated to learn. It takes time to many people, which means there are, we have too few teams, probably. I wanted to say that maybe not too much. We don't want something too easy to enter. We don't want something, you go on a website randomly, you, are, you, you don't apply any process, and you start translating in random Spanish or random French or whatever. We still want to keep control. We want to keep the, quali the quality. And my last message, the one I added at the very end, because that can be a good transition for Zach. Translators are 100% part, part of Debian. You can become a Debian developer if you are only a translator. We have this status of non-uploading Debian developer who has access to Debian machines, which is very important for the work of many of us. You can vote. I checked before and I wasn't sure, but you can be the DPL. You are no longer second class citizens in some way. We only have five people like this in the overall Debian out of hundreds of Debian developers. That's 
something is going wrong, but this is a recent status. So I would like to encourage those people who contribute regularly on translation work to enter this process. This is not scary. This is not a, such a difficult process. And do it, do it. We need that kind of contributors also. And if you have questions, you can ask questions. If you don't, you can look at these Nicaraguayan landscapes. Hi, Christian. Congratulations for your presentation. I like you very much. And thank you for having you be clear. And I have the dude in, in the PodFconf um, website uh, where the names of the responsibles, um, the percentage uh, indicators. Um, I want to ask you if you can explain in faster the... Um, you, want, you want me to go back to the... I have, now I have many pages open, so it will be tricky, but I can try. Yeah. You mentioned in that yeah, place... The, the score the, and the... For example, the percentage. Yeah. I, I can I can explain this part. Of course, I, I went only to that part. These are untranslated uh, packages, packages with completely untranslated PO depth conf templates. Here we have partially translated packages. They are red when the percentage is very low, and up to green when the percentage is quite high. The translator name is here. You can get the file here. And the, the other name is the name of the person who sent the request for review. So these pages also show you where are these packages. So if I, for instance, if I want to pick something, uh, an incomplete package which I would like to complete, I shouldn't pick something that's already done, such as these ones. But maybe I should pick sys in it, sys v in it, because, well, there is a translator. So if I want to pick that, I first need to contact that person. I shouldn't take over a translator's work without asking him or her if he agrees with me taking over. So there are many names, but these are the responsible and person in charge names. I hope this answers. Your yeah, question. Thank you. Oh, was I so clear and so crystal clear? My God, it's scary. So you were all sleeping, I'm afraid. I didn't notice. I tried to watch if somebody was trying to kill someone with a sock, but I didn't notice anything. I forgot. Uh, this would be out of the rules. If I see someone, you're out of the game, right? Any other questions? I don't know. Hi, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I do translation most for upstream projects like Drupal and, um, and and other projects like Clementine, a music player that has uh, its translation framework on a, set, on a website called uh, Transifex. I don't know if you know yeah. about it. It's an open source project. Uh, on both um, websites, both in Drupal that has its own framework and in Transifex, uh, it's very easy to do translation. Very, very easy. It's, it's the, the example that you gave that was a point and click translation. But um, it's not that easy uh, to, to fall in the fear that you was um, expressing, that anyone can do translation without any quality. Normally, you have somebody that needs uh, your approval if you are a new person, and there is a trust system. So if you... Um, has uh, good translations, and uh, the people that has um, s supervised you gave you a good score, then you can uh, immediately start translating. Um, it's, it's like a trust system. It's not like anyone can come and translate whatever. So um, 
I saw the system is um, I see a, a working system, but it's really hard, and I I I can see the difficulty for a new person to start translating for the Debian project. So um, it's just um, my my point of view. It will be cool to have a point and click translation, but with a trusted system for the translator that have come into the project for the first time. Yeah, well, that about having to summarize your your suggestion is uh, those frameworks, translation frameworks. Indeed, in the past they were too open, and we know a very famous one that has been used by Ubuntu and uh, what's in the view of many people, too open, too easy to enter, no quality, as you said. It, there have been many improvements on, in all those frameworks. The problem we have in Debian currently, mostly, as many things in Debian, things don't happen just because someone wants them to happen. Sure. They, they happen because someone does the work. S and also, the work is very difficult because of this very widespread information. Um, so we are considering that. We are considering, we are not considering to use TransFX for some different reasons. And because also um, it probably too much depends on backend VCS, I guess. We are considering to use some things like WebLate. We were considering to use Putol at some time, but it's not hooked enough into VCS to work with the places where we have good VCS integration. So we're considering, for instance, to work more probably with WebLate, also because WebLate Outer happens to work in the past with Debian, so it's, usual, it's more useful. So there is no rule against frameworks. Just needs to happen that needs someone to start, and we first needed to have a rock-solid machine for that. And still, we want to keep this process, this control. It's slow, it's clumsy, it sounds a little bit old to work in mailing list, but I can tell you, it works. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Um, in about 15 minutes, we should have uh, bits from the DPL coming up from uh, Stefano Zaccheroli. So stick around. I scared him, I think. He He'll left. be back. So I can talk on his behalf in Italian, maybe, if you want. Okay. So thank you for your attention and um, for your interest in localization and translation.